Thanks, bud. Are you all ready? Right, good evening, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us. Before I start, just in case there is a fire, <laughs> there are three routes when leaving this room. Both you can find when going out those two doors, as you can see on the map. Each room you are in this evening, though, will have a diagram near the door that shows all the fire escape routes. And wherever you leave the building, make sure you assemble on the medical centre car park, which if you go out the front door, imagine the surroundings is a clock face, it's 11 o'clock, okay? Same for when you're downstairs, these are fire exits. Um, and there we go. Now before I properly start all the proceedings, I have a few apologies for those who were not able to attend tonight. Listen up. <laughs> Cadet Warrant Officer, Cadet Warrant Officer Catherine Clara, ex-Cadet Jay Butler, ex-Cadet Corporal Russell Pigeon, ex-Cadet Corporal Dan Paul, civilian instructor, sorry, ex-civilian instructor Martin Paget. Ex Cadet Corporal Kieran, Kieran Ips George, ex Cadet Flight Sergeant Noah Stokes, ex Cadet Corporal Jack Corporal, not ex, this is different, isn't it? he's a current corporal, and ex Cadet Corporal Anisha Majaria, and ex Cadet Tolly Archie. I should put them in more of a better order. Right, so apologies for that. Right, so Cadet Warrant Officer, Cadet Warrant Officer Toby Frost joined the squadron on Wednesday the 27th of January 2010 at age 13. Which means he has spent six years, eight months and 17 days as <laughs> or 2,452 days. Within that time, he's attended 345 parade, house, parade nights out of a possible 500. <laughs> that is true, actually. Um, now, as you know, he's worked up through the ranks. So, he was promoted to Cadet Corporal on Wednesday, the 5th of October 2011. Cadet Sergeant, Wednesday, the 4th of July 2012. Cadet Flight Sergeant, Wednesday, the 16th of January 2013. And Cadet Warrant Officer on Wednesday, the 4th of March 2015. However, his promotion to Cadet Warrant Officer was actually approved by HQA Cadets on Friday the 31st of October 2014, so you had quite a few months to work. <coughs> and as you notice of the pattern, it's all Wednesdays, which wasn't planned. Um, uh, here's a rough look at how much time that actually looked that he uh, was in each rank. So during this time that he's actually been a cadet, 351 cadets have passed through the squadron since January 2010 when he joined. <coughs> since becoming a cadet NCO in 2011, October 2011, Cadet Warren has worked with 45 cadet NCOs, which is quite a few actually. Um, now, here's a chance to learn a little bit more about Toby. Back in October 2014, I interviewed then Cadet Flight Sergeant Frost for a video that was going to be published on our YouTube channel. Unfortunately, the video was never published. Now, please be aware there are quite a few cringy moments on my part. <laughs> um, I haven't checked or plugged in the audio. <laughs> Sorry. Of, of what it'd be like, so I joined, I wanted to join some sort of military organisation, 
uh, during the efforts. But what was the, the main thing that stood out to you about the efforts that you really like the look of? Uh, it's very, very professional. Uh, <laughs> I like the look of my course cadets and I think it's very well organised activities we do. And I feel it's not being put in the future. So as you know, there's a massive variety of activities you can do and different opportunities. Now, most of them you've actually attended and carried out because you've been here for a while. So, band, let's go there first. How many big instruments have you played? Three. Three, okay. So, I know the bugle and the snare. What else you said? Uh, Tenor. Tenor, yeah. Okay. Yeah, obviously. Which one did you learn first? The uh, bugle. Bugle. It's one of my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hard to play? People. Yeah. People think it's the snare, that's the way it sounds, but I personally think it's hard. Another activity is sport. I know that you've been to a lot of occasions, whether it be at this squadron or actually um, attended on behalf of the squadron. How many different kinds of sports would you say that you've attended as part of the academics? Uh Mainly, well, athletics, football, swimming, the main ones that I've done. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, what's the highest that you've managed to progress up through? So, you would have the progression would be squadron, wing, region, and then to course. So, what's the highest that you've managed region. to do? Region. Yeah. Okay, what, what um, sport was that event? That was athletics. Athletics. Yeah. Do you remember what event? Uh, yeah, it was long jump. Long jump. I'm okay. pretty sure it was long jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I don't know if that was not something I'd do in my free time. But <laughs> when I was a kid, I left. It was about four years ago when I was a kid, I can't volunteer to do it because it's the only one left. I did it. I found out I could do it better than I thought. How often have you been shooting? How many times a dish? Uh, about six times I've been on a few shoots and weekends as well. It's not, I, I've tried to get my arms from there. I'm not, I'm not gifted in shoots. I've tried and tried and tried. I feel like it's my side and I always got the bats, so I want the bats. Uh, I've tried and um, I've never been able to get that, but I, I do enjoy it, yeah, but it's not something I've done. Could you describe the experience, what it feels like when you are shooting? Uh, it's surreal. Uh, when you think you're actually holding a live, yeah. live ammunition, mm -hmm. it's surreal. And you're in a serious situation, but at the same time, you enjoy it and it feels good. And it's all safe as well? Yeah. All safe. Now, obviously, <laughs> the name of the game is famous for its flying vikings, hence the name. So, do you remember the first time that you went flying? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What year was that? That was my first. The first year I went flying the Okay. How did you feel before actually attending on the day? When you were told that you were going to be going flying, how did it feel? Um, as a 13 year old, it, was, it was, felt like Christmas and that, but I, I was really, really excited. And it was, it was even better than I thought it was going to be, the fact that you actually get to have a go at flying. Mm -hmm. That was really good. And um, it's crazy to think that you actually take control in your first lesson, yeah. rather than just sitting there and letting it be like that. Yeah, when I learned to drive, I didn't even drive on a car for my first lesson. Mm -hmm. And I got to drive a plane before. I got to fly a plane before I drove a car. Which is, you think about it like that. Yeah. It is, it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity. <laughs> When were you promoted to corporal? Uh, in 20, late 2011. Okay. 20, yeah. What do you believe uh, that got you that promotion? Uh, my first year and a half, well, I've not finished since I've been in the academics, but well, I attended absolutely everything I could go to, and that's something I generally say cadets to do. You need to be everywhere, you need to, you need to stand there from the crowds, and uh, um, I always made sure I was always the top notch. That's my person I would never do anything unless I was going to do it. I did a really good work. So, yeah, I attended everything. Uh, my appearance, events, and attendance on parade nights as well. Would you say that that is still the same case for promotions above that, so just sergeant, flight sergeant? Yeah, uh, again, you, you've got to stand there, and obviously our squadron uh, NCOs get given terms of references. And when I was a corporal, I was in charge of. Uniform. Yeah, it's uh, like a job description. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was in charge of obviously the uniform, so I did uniform inspections all the time. Mm -hmm. I averaged them out with cadets. I spoke to cadets personally, they could prove and all went back to the boss. And obviously, something the boss saw, saw it, and they could see that I'd 
but you know, just giving them a value worth for zero. Um, it's good. Now, how did it feel when you got promoted to flight sergeant? When uh, I got flight, well, at the time it was me and two of sergeants. Uh, when, I knew, when I got told my interview was up, I was, I, it felt good to know that, but obviously, it's a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of what you've got to do. And when one lost, obviously, still had flight sergeant, it's, it's, I like the rank because you, you know, you, you can look, look at the NCO team and help them because I'm part of it. Like to help the NCOs, I'm, I'm very keen on corporals, you know, making sure corporals, if I, I especially focus on corporals because I think that's, that's the hardest rank. I mean, out of the three ranks that I've been, the corporal was hands down hardest, so I have a lot of, lot of time for the corporals and that's something that I've There's a lot of responsibility there. So, who, what would you say are your biggest achievements for your top three? Uh, well, when I first joined, I looked at a cadet one officer at the time who was a cadet one was a draper and I thought one day I would probably leave that uh, long way. Hopefully one day I'll go and become a cadet one. Um, so I'd say you'll see being promoted is number one for this day. Okay. It's something that I've always wanted to do. Number two would be flying. Um, something I wanted to do as a teen teen kid. I always wanted to fly and I got to do that. So. Uh, it doesn't not long fly six out all the times we've been flying, it's good. And number three, probably generally in general camps. And I've been on I've been on Isle of Wight, a few summer camps, uh, adventure training camps as well, that's like better places like that. All of, no matter where it is, it's a pretty brilliant week or weekend that I did. So I events six out for me where I got to fly in early helicopter and I did, I went on I went on that camp not knowing anyone and I've come up with thirty new friends. Uh, that they be my top three. Now, what would you, in terms of advice, give to new cadets that have just started? Well, well I, I, I do give advice to new cadets. I really make sure that they're first, I'm the first NCO that they talk to, and I want them to know who I am and that I'm in town. And I always say, you know, if, if you work hard, we see cadets work hard, and it's definitely work hard, get your first nine exams passed. Uh, get on as many camps flying all the experience that you can. Because uh, what, what you put in, you get out twice as much. What's, what would you say the main memory that sticks in your head that sums up your time as an actor? Probably, we, we did some course, the farm course trials, um, so it was, it was in our you know, November. that was offered to Toby was his visit to Hong Kong as part of the International Air Cadet Exchange Program during July 2015. The International Air Cadet Exchange Program is an annual worldwide exchange for aviation-minded young people. Members are drawn from 20 countries around the world and different air cadet organisations meet up in different countries. Toby and nine other UK air cadets went to Hong Kong where they were joined by cadets from the United States, Canada, 
Turkey, France, Netherlands, Korea, China and Australia. The trip was spread out over 18 days, 14 of which were in Hong Kong, and three were a tour of the southern province of China before returning to Hong Kong to come home. Throughout the trip, cadets were occupied with a busy schedule, <coughs> and it started off with the UK cadets meeting the British consulate, whom has the job of sustaining the important and long-standing relationship between the UK and Hong Kong. During this meeting, there was an opportunity to address smartly and have a Q&A session regarding the job they do, which surrounds political, commercial and economic interests. Along with these formal visits, cadets did many other interesting activities, such as going to the Victoria Peak, um, which gives guests a fantastic view of the Hong Kong skyline. They also visited a landmark place of worship called the Tian Tan Buddha, which is the second <coughs> biggest of its kind in the world and attracts pilgrims from all across Asia. They also had the opportunity to visit, to visit Hong Kong Government Flying School, where they were given the opportunity to have a look around many aircraft, as well as experience a flight in a Super Puma helicopter. It was during this trip that Tiger met his girlfriend, Cadet Warrant Officer Catherine Flower from 215 City of Swansea Squadron. Cadet Warrant Officer Flower has been awarded the Air Training Course 75th Anniversary Sword on the date of broach this year, which means she's the best female air cadet in the United Kingdom. Quite a hit. <laughs> <laughs> um, cadet Warrant Officer Frost has gained a massive amount of memories from his time for the air cadet organisation. But as well as this, the cadets here also have some favourite members of them. I would like to invite up Cadet Corporal Rogers, who has a short message to share. <laughs> I do apologise, it looks like it's a short script. It's not. <laughs> every cadet will have a story about Cadet Warren Officer Frost, and every story, every story will be different. The one thing they'll share in common is that they're all good. When I was asked to work, write a speech, I looked back and realised I honestly couldn't think of one memory to pinpoint, just one thing that I can remember. Eventually I picked up on one, but I could think of so many good memories to tell you. Too many for one night. So instead, I'll sum them up just with his personality and j as the main thing. That memory that I mentioned is that how friendly he is with everyone. As I joined cadets, I was a very reclusive person. I wouldn't really talk to many people who were different from me. I'd be around people of my own age group. And on my first night, I remember the one sentence Cadet Warren Officer Frost said to me. And it's something as simple as, so how are you enjoying it? It may seem as such a simple thing to say to someone, but the way he said it to me was, there was no judgement in it. And it seemed to me that he honestly wanted to know my opinion. And that meant the world to me at the time. I was feeling intimidated by everyone at Cadets and just being spoken to in a way that made me feel respected is just was just so big for me. The other thing is that he's so respectful to everyone. As even he said in his interview, he will help anyone. If you need help, he will give it to you. You can go to him for pretty much anything. Even if you get told off, he doesn't make it out as if it's something bad. He's making it that he's genuinely wanting to help you, which he is. And he gives you ideas of how to make things better. And he improves you as a cadet and as a person. That, apologies. I'd happily go on for absolutely ages telling you about everything. But I think his interview summed it up as well. He's just a genuinely lovely person. And he helps you out with everything, personal, cadet related. and. He's just words can't describe how upset everyone in the squadron will be that you're leaving. There's... <laughs> <laughs> I remember, this is going off topic a bit off script, but in year eight I remember being asked by my English teacher. We had to write an essay about someone that we had as a role model. And I could never think of someone as a role model. I think I finally found that person when I joined cadets. One more bit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> For 
from everyone at 2.97 Consulate Squadron, thank you, good luck, and again, the main thing, thank you. Um, I would like to invite up Cadet Sergeant Lucy Pritchard. Toby, throughout your years at Crossford, you've encouraged and motivated so many people. You've been an inspiration to me throughout my cadet career. <coughs> There's little things you've said that have inspired me to be more and improve. Sometimes it's the littlest things you have said that make the biggest effects. There are many memories that we've shared, but I think to this day, the funniest moment is when you told me about pizza butter. <laughs> for those of you who haven't been, get one after frost, can't eat sandwiches with crust on them. So when he's at home, his mum cooks them all for him. Tonight, C.I. Pritchard has done you some sandwiches with no crust, especially for you. <laughs> <laughs> Another special memory that no, not only did it make the staff smile, but I'm sure in a minute everyone else will. <coughs> Your fit flops and socks. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the lady of fashion. I'm sorry for embarrassing you tonight, but I wish you all the very best in the future. <laughs> relatively short time, but in that time you've built a large impression. You've had a significant impact on my cadet life and I've had so many things to thank you for. Currently it's rarely crossed paths, and even though I see you on most crowd nights, it's not usually possible to speak. It is only until I have St Morgan, an occasional weekend event, that I and other cadets have the time to talk. It's something I think we all wish we could have done more often. As a result, one of the nicest things I took from camp was the free time available to spend time together. Considering the dividing rank and age, the fact that I and a few other cadets didn't know you well beforehand, you interacted, accepted, and consciously made the effort with each of us individually to involve us all in conversation and activities. It's uncommon among other squadrons to see cadet one officers talking this along with cadets the way you were with us. Truly made me, and I'm sure many others, Feel connected and a part of the week. Since camp, it has been actually something I've thoroughly missed. I believe this still is one of the, the main factors that grows all closer together. Over your time as a cadet, you've become a piece of the squadron. To me, you're part of the structure of cadets and essential for the squadron to succeed. The passion, optimism, care, and emotional attachment you have for cadets is utterly undeniable and for me, really infectious. You co you're constantly setting the bar high with expectations, which you're certain we're going to exceed, constantly getting us to be our better selves, developing us as individuals. Recently, it's come to mind just how other focused you've become. While still, well, while still self motivated, you're constantly aiming to improve the squadron, being an active part, and endlessly providing your support and free time to aid others. The time you've devoted and quantity of cadets you've supported and mentored over your time is astonishing. Not to mention your dedication to fulfil the tasks and expectations are never ending. Wing through your day thoroughly showed me your deep ambitions and optimism. I don't think I've ever seen somebody quite so nervous before a cadet related event. <laughs> With the endless practicing, uniform checks and planning work in advance, you really put yourself into it and not one of us wanted to let you down. It still sticks with me just how disappointed in myself I felt after being one of the cadets who turned left instead of right during the ring to be able to do a <laughs> Feeling so utterly hopeless, it dawned on me just how much of an impact you had on me. Your passion and ambition both imprinted onto me. I'm sure others will and I'm sure others will your devotion was so unbelievably infectious. What you've achieved in your in your time is amazing. 
and serve as one of the best role models that I saw. By the end of this, you may be wondering why I, did, why I decided to come up here and speak today in front of all your family and friends, especially considering my serious lack in public speaking skills. It's due to the positive influence you've had on both me and a bunch of other cadets, which needs to be recognised. You've provided me and so many others with opportunities. From your perspective, allowing you to attend a political parade, adding you to the drill team this year, and even providing you with a chance for a speech, may appear quite minor. But to me, personally, it had an incredible impact. And even though you most likely don't recognise it, you've helped so many people on a ton of different levels, not only as cadets, but as people on a personal level too. In my eyes, you're the recipe for the perfect NCO. This is showed by winning the best NCO at the presentation evening. You're the figure you all look up to and wish to be. The values and positions of a person I'm sure everyone in this room would like to achieve. <coughs> I'd just like to draw attention to the fact that this room is fit to burst. For so many people devoted my Friday night to wish you a memorable farewell. You should be reminded of how you're one of the greatest assets in time to our squadron. You've truly made the most of your time, time as a cadet in your teenage years, and your input into our squadron is immeasurable. It's something I and many others are thoroughly thankful for. Whilst it's one of the saddest things to say goodbye, I hope everyone enjoys the remainder of the night. Congratulations on your time as a cadet. Happy 20th birthday, Cadet <laughs> when I found out that I'd be part of the NCO team, but I was a bit worried about all the jobs and extra responsibilities that I'd have to carry out compared to when I was a cadet. Fortunately for me, Cadet One Officer was there and I was worried and unsure about anything. As a result, he's made me a, become stronger and more confident as an NCO. Moving on, uh, the funniest moments that I have about Cadet One Officer Frost, among many, is um, when he managed to stuff the whole budget. Oh, I'm going to stick up a fudge in your mouth, which is quite impressive. But um, the best was probably when we went to RF St. Morgan on an Easter camp. But on our first day, we went surfing. Where, as always, Cadet One Officer Frost was extremely confident and determined to stand up. However, this came with many failures. <laughs> if anyone was filming it, I'm sure we'd have got more than £250 from leaving the phone. <laughs> We've managed to get a couple of pictures from him as a surfing world champion. Um, yeah. So, in that picture, he got truly swallowed up by a wave and spat back out where he looked like he didn't know where he, wanted, where he was. To conclude, I'd just like to say how much of an inspiration you have been to all the cadets past and present, and we'll have a very high benchmark to be in all aspects. Thank you for everything that you've done. short stories about Toby, both of which happened this year. Talking of the RF St. Morgan camp, we both myself and Toby <laughs> We must both been over 18, we were in the same room. On the first night of the camp, I learned that Toby couldn't sleep without the light being left <laughs> So I had to put up sleeping with the light on. <laughs> I managed one night before I had to take action. The following night, I adapted my bed. Oh, hold on, that's him. That's the bed. <laughs> right. Hearing of my struggle, the rest of the cadets felt bad for me. 
Fortunately for me, Cadet Warrant Officer Sarah Fullaway from 151 Nexus Squadron was kind enough to purchase a small torch for Toby to save, <laughs> to save having the lights on. Did he use it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward to the second to last night when Toby finally, finally allowed me to turn the lights on. It's around midnight and, and about to become the 1st of, of April. We're both chatting away, and after about 30 seconds of no discussion, I hear movement from his bed. <laughs> Followed by Toby shouting, turn the lights on, quick, turn the lights on, as well as a lot of swearing. <laughs> <laughs> I let out, turn the light on, and discovered a scared cadet warrant officer. <laughs> he explained to me that he saw a young man leap down from the top bunk to the bottom of his bed. <laughs> 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 he proceeded to shake the bed with his mouth wide open. Now, if you don't believe in ghosts, then you won't believe this. But there was no chance of it being a person, as the, other, as the door didn't open. It scared the hell out of the both of us. We even had to wake up the camp commandant. <laughs> which was Flight Lieutenant Martin Fullaway, who is officer commanded at 151 Lempster Squadron, who was the duty member of staff for that night. None of the cadets were aware of the incident until we were travelling back home. We spent the remainder of that night sleeping on the settees of the common room, <laughs> and nine of us were prepared to sleep in the ghost room for one for another night. <laughs> so we slept in the common room again. <laughs> the second story is more recent and happened last Friday during the squadron's dine in night, and he's going to kill me for saying it. For those who don't know, the rules state that once you sit down the me and the meal started, you can't get up until the short comfort break. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be fine. Toby made the rookie mistake of drinking far too much before the meal. <laughs> Just after the starter, he announced to the table that he needed the toilet. Several cadets suggested some solutions, all of which were not serious. <laughs> I then suggested that he should have someone accidentally spill a drink over him and asked the top table to excuse it. Again, not a serious suggestion, but he listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> he poured a drink and asked Cadet Erin Alexander to knock it over. It worked, he got the attention of the boss, his wife, the guest of honour, Group Captain Hunt, stage commander of R.O. Cosford, and pretty much the remainder of the top table. Toby asked if he could leave to dry off, but got disapproving looks. <laughs> he took the risk and left the table, However, after returning, he informed us that the toilet didn't have dryers, only paper towels. So we had to sit there with wet trousers for the rest of the evening. <laughs> as well as leaving us today, Toby also turned 20. So as with most birthdays, we have a cake for you. <laughs> Chocolate ones downstairs, there's a bit of sponge and um, yeah, everybody three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. This has resulted in him being very well respected by cadets and staff. 
Because of his exceptionally high standards, he's helped Cadet and Theory develop and grow as a team, which in turn has improved all aspects of Cadets and the squadron as a whole. I'm very grateful for everything that Toby's done for me. He's helped me more than he realises, and I would not be the NCO I am today without his brilliant mentoring. He's been my role model ever since I was a cadet, and I've really enjoyed working with him, and we do work well together. It would be incredibly odd not having you by my side, and I certainly have big shoes to fill. It's true when they say that you only need something once it's done. Um, I'd like to <coughs> invite up Flight Lieutenant Vince, Officer Commanding of the Squadron, to say a few words. Be very nice. going to repeat some of the things that uh, have already been said, um, but uh, Cadet Warrant Officer Fitz asked me to say something. So, I'm quite often heard telling our newer members that the more you put into cadets, the more you get out of it. I also tell them that being an air cadet provides you with, provides you with a sense of achievement, enjoyment and a sense of pride. And Cadet Warrant Officer Frost, I think, is living proof of this. In the five years that I have been the honour, or I have had the honour to be Toby's CO, I have never seen it any less than immaculately dressed. From the mirror-like shine on his shoes to the razor-sharp creases on his trousers and shirt sleeves, the pride in his uniform, whether on a parade night or when out and about, is always exemplary. Toby has always supported the squadron in the many and varied weekend activities that we undertake never picking and choosing what he does, but just being there as a member of the team, wanting to help and enjoying the company of those around him. It was these qualities, demonstrating an ability to lead by example, that earned Toby a place on the Cadet NCO team. It wasn't long before Toby was working his way up to the <coughs> Cadet rank structure, for as well as leading by example, other qualities were emerging. It was apparent that as well as wanted to do the best personally, he also wanted to see others fulfil their true potential, something which he's always done in a professional and approachable manner. Achieving the rank of Cadet Warrant Officer is no easy feat, and when you get there it is not an easy ride either, for you are not just expected to lead the Cadet NCO team, you are also expected to be the link between the cadets and the adult staff. Toby, you have fulfilled your role to the highest of standards, and it has been an honour to see you develop personally, as well as embrace the opportunities that we have been able to give you. You have been a role model for the other cadets to follow, and on behalf of us all, I would like to say thank you for being part of Costa Squadron and Costa Life. <laughs> Subscribe to the website. Oh my god, no, you don't subscribe to the website.
to the website and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Am I right, Corporal? Yeah. What? Stop shit! She's making fantasy or work it. Uh huh. She only talking for a burger. Uh huh. Let me see a shiny worth it. Yeah. She must be the money. She must be the money. Right, this video is instructions on how you should properly. I'm not, I'm not gifted in shooting. I've tried and tried and tried. I feel like this vice I don't always got the badge, so I got the badge. <laughs> nice one, Tucker. <laughs> Speaking of berries, if anyone finds a beret, can you let me know because I've lost mine. This is a spare one that I'm moulded as we speak. So if anyone finds a beret, it's mine. This video today is going to show you how to wear your work and you... Oh my god, I'm struggling. And what? So, Flight Sergeant Frost, what did you enjoy most about tonight? It's a start of the generation. You have all the way around your head and you... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ars. <laughs> <laughs> right, watch this. Thank you very much for watching. Now again, please vote who you want to meet. I'll do that video. Okay, cool. So it's Wednesday the 27th of August. <laughs> <laughs> that one would be dark. Cut that bit out, okay. Uh, I enjoyed the food and I enjoyed watching Sergeant Street do a speech because he did really well. So tonight is the 8th of October. Um, some at the start. <laughs> <laughs> a fantastic new band that we've got on the go. Uh, did you enjoy it? Yes. Yeah, even though you were doing lessons. Yeah, it was all right, bye. Okay, so tonight is the 8th of October. Pockets! Hand out! <laughs> <laughs> so, is it rolling? Yeah. Hello. Here's how to wrap up rope correctly. Probably very good. I'm not looking at you. Uh, in all honesty, until I. HQ, confirm it and the boss gives me more ranks and my stripes are not my crown. What's this? Is it four? Come on! Three. Oh, I'm never going to in the flight simulator. Oh, stop sweating over the flight simulator. <laughs> and then I'll just use some other business. <laughs> Sergeant Phillips, his buttons are central, going all the way down to his belt buckle, and then to his flyer, he's nice and central. <laughs> In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bolt your green parade shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and just to point you on skirts, females, any, what is it, just ironed all the way yeah, around? no creases, good job. Okay, with, and the most... Can I just say again, if anyone finds a beret, it's mine. <laughs> there's, a, there's a prize if you find it. It should be leveled all the way around your head. And... <laughs> what? Click here if you want to watch that video. That video will be just sat here. If you want to know to bring the I think that would be something. No. It's just here. Yeah. <laughs> Back. yeah, there you go. Come on, come on ladies, come on. Book an ear on three. Book an ear on three. So be you. Oh, okay. One, <laughs> two, three. Two, three. And dance, don't you dare look back. Just keep your eyes on me. I said you're holding back. She said, shut up and dance to me. This woman is my destiny. She said,
So as you can see, keep dabbing the polish into the kiwi. <laughs> You gotta point it up. Okay. There's a just subscribe there. That's where you sign up for your emails. Sign up for your emails via your email, and that is at www.pos.sign.pos.st forward slash sign me up. Now, final question: Would you do it all again? No. Yes, I would. For the <laughs> I've been racking my brains trying to think of some hilarious stories that Toby could tell, but in honestly, all of them are still getting in trouble or are still far too inappropriate. So I'm going to lend it with a good luck message. Uh, good luck, Toby, in, uh, in later life. Um, we are only around at Cadet together for a short time, but you made a good impression. We always knew uh, that we were going to go far, apart from that time on the minibus down to Brighton. Yeah, You're right, Toby. Um, hope you remember me. Um, congrats on finishing your cadet career as a one officer. That's really well done, mate. I, I can't think of anyone that deserves that better than you. Um, of the memories we've had together, I can't think of one in particular, but we've had plenty of good times on cadet camps, especially Isle of Wight and things like that. So yeah, um, best looks in your future, man. Take care. Hello. I would say I've got one uh, one best memory of um of our time in the cadet together. What I would say is that you know every parade night where um, we could have a laugh and a joke together was always you know made it more enjoyable and uh, made sometimes made three hours a joke go that bit quicker when you can have a laugh and a joke around. Of course, while being very professional at the same time, um, we had a lot of good lot of good laughs together. A few good days um, that stick in my mind. Not for any particular reason, just remember them as, uh, as having enjoyed them. There's quite a few band functions. There's um, one of the air shows I remember when it was really when it was nice weather. Well, um, Shawbury, Shawbury Families Day, I think. Um, one of the presentation evening, the presentation evening where, where um, I think it was the second one that was that was quite good. Um, and just general general having a Having a good time, really. Playing, playing catch with eggs. That was, uh, that was a highlight. But <laughs> meant to be a secret. See you later. Can't believe you finally leaving, Toby. We've had some great times over the years, especially running a squadron together. That was pretty cool. My favourite memory, though, came from the Isle of Wight when we were on the night exercise. Our team had said that we were going to have an hour's sleep. So me and you got ourselves off to bed, woke up an hour later, only to find that everybody else was still fast asleep. So we were only sat around the campfire, let a couple of hours pass and they still were fast asleep. But we had a good chat and some horrible fish and a rabbit no, springs to mind. Anyway, good luck, speak soon. Never really had many uh, many chances to go on camps with Toby, apart from on a, like Western Park horse trials. And my favourite memory from one of them was uh, when he, he he managed to get a load of spiders in his tent. They're all like little baby ones. We went in spring, so little baby ones they float around everywhere. Kind of like a bit, bit of their threat. And he managed to leave his tent open all day. So when he came back on break. Obviously went in his tent and they're all dangling from the ceiling. And uh, Toby doesn't like spiders or little crawly things. So he ran over to the staff and he goes, Staff, I've got loads of spiders in my tent, how do I get them out? And they go, right, light a match, blow it out, and like fill your tent full of smoke. And he's like, oh yeah, 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 okay. So off he, thinks, off he trots, come back over to the tent. And he gets inside, zips it up behind him, lights a match, blows it out, fills the tent full of smoke. And we're all stood outside, the, uh, so, well, outside, waiting for, waiting for the minibus. And uh, all we hear is, it's working! They're all dying! 
Oh, so at this point, we're all thinking, oh, great, work, yeah. And then there was a bit of a pause, and the highest pitched scream, he, it didn't even sound human. Then a, then a shout saying, they're all in my hair, they're in my mouth, oh, no. So then, of course, the staff heard this second scream that he let, let out, and they come running over going, is there a girl in that tent? Where's the girl? Let her out, get her out now. And Toby burst through, through, his, uh, through his door, breaking the lip on the way out. Rub his hair, spitting everywhere, <laughs> trying to get a spite. <laughs> and of course, the staff at this point are taking the mickey and laughing. And yeah, he's, he's hilarious and character. Anyway, yeah, enjoy your pie, mate. He definitely deserves it. Toby, just a quick message to say thank you very much for everything you've done for me and the squadron. Uh, you've been the best warrant officer you could, uh, we could have ever had. And all the memories we've had, like Lambeda uh, and all cadet nights and stuff like that, been brilliant and I thank you very much for that and I bet the rest of the squadron will as well um, and also just a good another good look, uh, good luck message for you uh, in the future and I hope you do very well Cadet Warrant Officer Frost was a cadet that stood out from the very start of his time with the squadron as somebody who embraced the activities and the ethos that the Internet organisation offers this is reflected in his uniform, which is always immaculate. We can always see a reflection in his shoes. For me, I think things that stick out as far as things he's done, the opportunity to meet the Queen when she came to Cosford uh, celebrating her Diamond Jubilee, I think would be something that was very, very prestigious, something that he got involved with, and it was nice to be given that opportunity. But it's also nice to give him the opportunity to sort of get involved with the International Air Cadet Exchange Programme, going to Hong Kong, and doing things that a lot of us only dream of. This, I think, proves to other cadets that these opportunities are available, and it also shows that what you put into the organisation is what you get out of it. For me, he's been somebody we can always rely on, somebody who has always taken what we ask him to do, done it with a good sense of humour. He's a role model for other cadets, and I think just seeing him spending time with cadets, and as somebody who just wants to see the squadron progress, and wants to see the individuals within the squadron progress, is a, a, a fantastic attribute that I think will stand him good in later life. We've certainly enjoyed having him on the squadron. We will miss him. Um, we will miss uh, his sense of humour. We'll miss his um, approach to everything we do. Um, and he's been an absolute pleasure to have on, on the squadron. We wish him the best with whatever he does uh, in the future, but uh, yeah, we wish him very, very well for the future coming. So I haven't really planned to do a massive speech. I was just saying I'd do the typical speech that you do on a final parade. So uh, this is in the speech, but seriously, I can see how much effort you've put into this tonight, Ryan. It's a really, really, it's unbelievable. It's, I can't believe you've done it, really. So I do really appreciate it more than anything you've ever done. And uh, there's no better person than Ryan to be taking the role of Cadet Warrant Officer, and he will step it up and he'll do even better. So. I ask that the cadets show him the most upright respect because he deserves it and he's a great lad. So I wish you the best of luck in the role of Cadet Warren to run. So yeah, seven years, well six, uh, six, six years, eight months since I've been in the Air Cadets. As you can see, it's been an absolute massive part of my life and I can't imagine my life without cadets in some shape or form, so I will definitely be staying around in some, and I've got to give back what's, what the, the cadet organisations give me, I've got to give something back for sure. Nothing really sticks out, but I've made some great friends and 
but they're ex-cadets um, cadets that are here now and it is awesome to see some of my old friends back, it does bring back some good memories. Um, like I say, camps, weekends, formal parades, dining in nights, um, it's just memories that you cherish and it, it can be car parking on a Sunday morning, it's still a really good day for some reason. <laughs> So I just want to say a thank you really more than anything. Uh, firstly, a thank you to every single cadet that's sat here, whether you've been here for two weeks and you've been working with me over the last few weeks. And hopefully seeing this sort of thing tonight shows you what you can really get out of the air cadet. So you may be bored at the moment doing your lessons and exams, but stick at it and uh, work hard and you will get the rewards that uh, you'll deserve because you're all really good, really good cadets. Uh, NCOs especially, the Cadets that I work closely with, all the corporals, all the sergeants, the flight sergeant, uh, cadet warrant officer, you've shown me the most upright respect, always, and I can't thank you enough, and I hope I've given it you back, because I think we've, you've, we've got an awesome NCO team here, and they do work really, really hard, and uh, I think they deserve a round of applause for being such a good team. <laughs> The Air Cadet organisation is all about the Air Cadets, but the staff at the back of the room are absolutely unbelievable for this squadron. And if you think they've all got full-time jobs, they're all working nine or five. Some staff members even come here straight from work, still in their uniform. <laughs> uh, so I do want to just thank the staff from the absolute bottom of my heart and thank you for absolutely everything. Not yet. <laughs> absolutely everything you've done. Um, they're helpful, kind, work hard, and they, all they want to do is see us succeed. Uh, and a lot of work, and I've seen it as a cadet warrant officer, a lot of work, you think that it finishes at half nine, books are closed, doors are gone, that is not it. Staff can be here for hours planning, prepping. So um, staff, really, I really do thank you for what you've given me, and um, I can't wait to look, I look forward to working with you one day. So thanks, staff. Let's, let's round of applause for the staff. <laughs> speech and you're in the final paragraph. All right. Okay, so finally, the OC of this squadron, sir, who I personally feel you've helped me so much to become the young man that I am today. Uh, I'll never forget the times where I've struggled to do exams and the bosses had me in his office and he's gone through the answers with me to make sure I pass. <laughs> little, little things like that that I'll never forget. <laughs> and it was the easiest one as well. <laughs> Uh, all the times you've put me out of my comfort zone and told me I've got to do speeches. Uh, at the time, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it, but now I can stand here and do speeches confidently. And it's all little things like that that the boss has done and given me all the little opportunities that have really rounded me and building my confidence up. Really, I can't even explain how much it's helped me. Uh, not to mention the fortnight I had in Hong Kong. I walked into Cadets one night and the boss said, do you fancy going on IS? I wouldn't have even managed that I could get on it, but the boss wrote me a glowing reference and got me on what turned out to be the best two and a half weeks of my life. Uh, so thank you again sir, I, I have the absolute utmost respect for you and I hope I've done you proud and I hope to repay you one day and I'll continue to give my all for the squadron when I become a staff, so thanks a lot. Thanks everyone for this evening, it's really, I really do appreciate it. <laughs> Instructor Claire Pritchard, Civilian Instructor Jason Pritchard, Vet Sergeant Lucy Pritchard, Vet Clay Walthorn, Toby's mum Sue and stepdad Paul, Toby's granddad Dave, and all of the cadets and staff that helped in some other form. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.
and you're welcome to make yourself uh, make your way downstairs to the crew room and the buffet will be open soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>